Hey everybody, I am making bread pudding for Nick's preschool, my son's preschool class, and Vanya and Yvette are insisting on taping me while I do it. It's not actually that exciting. I had to do some of it ahead of time because it's really boring. In order to make the bread pudding, I'll actually, I'll put the recipe up maybe for the, the girls to put on the fan site, but you need three whole eggs, you need eight yolks, and you have to whisk it together with, believe it or not, so disgusting, uh, five cups of half and half, and one and a half cups of sugar, and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla. That's it. So that's in here. I'm going to whisk it again really quick because it's been sitting here for a little bit. I'm actually making two batches of this because there's a lot of teachers, but if you make two batches, generally in baking, if I bake two batches of anything other than cookies, I split it in the bowls. For some reason, I mean, it's a southern thing, but it doesn't turn out right otherwise. I never bake pies or anything else. Every single one, the fillings all get their own bowl. So, you also need to have um, six croissants, and you have to cut them horizontally. The bottoms go in the bottom of your dish. I just kind of... It looks prettier, truthfully, if you use an oval-shaped dish, but I have one oval and one rectangle, and the teachers have uh, assured me that they don't really care what size the dish is. They just want a lot of bread pudding. So this is the biggest dish I have. Okay, so here's six, and they can overlap a little bit. It doesn't matter at all. But you want the bottoms down. Okay, these are my six tops. All right, then I have a cup of raisins. Sprinkle them around in the middle. If it was for me, I actually would not put raisins in it. I don't really like raisins. But it's not for me. And Miss Bonnie, who is from the South, who is the cook at Nick's Preschool, said that my bread pudding is as good as the one her grandma used to make. And I love Miss Bonnie, so starting about a month ago, the teachers have been hitting me up. All right, and now I'm gonna put the tops on. It doesn't have to be exact. You want the brown part facing up. <coughs> Bless you. Eventually it'll all come together, so it doesn't really matter. And on top, I lost one, I dropped one in the sink. Okay, now this part's gonna be gross. Let's take off my rings. Okay. One second, I'm coming back. Okay. Other thing is, see, I'm gonna do this right. So I was trying to remember, you have to make sure that the raisins are hidden inside the croissants or they burn. So you have to make sure they're tucked in. There's some right there. I know, I see there's some sticking out. I mean, obviously, <clears throat> I'm gonna tent it anyway, so it's not the biggest deal in the world, but I don't. So I don't even like raisins. I'm sure burnt ones don't taste good at all. Okay, now you have to pour your custard over. Which really is eggs, sugar, and half and half. This is like the most fattening thing known to man. Holy mac. I know, it's really oh. holy mac. It's like really, really fattening. Okay, and then oh. Oh, they have to soak in. So you have to help them out a little bit in the beginning. Oh my god. Eventually, all of the croissants you soak them for 10 minutes, but in between the process, you have to keep doing this because the I know it looks like it's way too much custard, but it's not, it's gonna all soak into the croissants. And the other trick is it's better if you use croissants that are a little bit stale, even though that sounds gross, because if they're too fresh, they will soak. Um, they will soak it up too fast and they'll stay, they'll stay soggy even when it's cooked. Can you buy them fresh and just let them sit out? Yeah, like, yeah, that's what I did. I bought them two days ago. I told uh, my husband Alex to buy the, you know, the ones that didn't seem really soft. <laughs> and then I just, you can either let them sit out overnight outside of a bag or I just let them sit in a bag for a couple days, a day or two, and then they're fine. That looks crazy. I know it looks crazy, but this is honestly like the best thing ever. You can, can make it with chocolate some? too, which is really <gasps> good. How do you put chocolate? Like a set of you raisins? You have to add chocolate. Well, uh, no. It depends. Sorry. Itchy. Um, 
We have the chocolate, but the teachers don't want chocolate. Miss Bonnie likes it the way that her grandma made it. So, so you can put ra instead of raisin chocolate chips, maybe? No. Oh, why? That uh, sounds like I don't know amazing. why, but it doesn't. It does. I don't think it will bake right. What you would put is you would. I think we should try it. You would put. You could do either syrup or you could do cocoa. You could melt so, chocolate chips. So if you in wanted. this mix, yeah. Like you could melt chocolate in. Okay. Like in a in a. Take um, note, viewers. Yeah, you could melt chocolate in a saucepan and then pour it in there. But you can't just like throw chocolate. I mean, I guess you could throw chocolate chips in, but it'd be kind of gross because then there'd be like splotches of chocolate and it wouldn't taste like chocolate bread pudding. So what do you want? So you just basically don't put the raisins in and. And you would add chocolate. I'll, okay. I'd have to actually look it up because in baking is not like cooking. When I cook, uh, that's also making me. I'm also making my famous split, split pea soup, but. Baking is a science. It is not like cooking where you just throw stuff together. You have to actually measure everything. Okay. So we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back in about eight minutes. And then about every three minutes, I'm going to come back and press this baby down again. And if you see any rogue raisins, just get rid of them because they, they will burn. Oh, that's really gross. Well, they're just raisins. No, no, that thing was like the eggs were sticking from your fingers. Well, because eggs. this is this. There are there. I know it just there are, gross, but it's probably delicious. They're it disgusting was, because there are literally um, eleven egg yolks and then three whites in this thing, and half and half. This is like if you need to gain a little weight, all you'd have to do is eat this for like three days straight. Okay, so no thanks. I'll be back. I'm washing my hands. Okay, so it has soaked for. 10 minutes, really for like 15 minutes, because we were talking on the phone. And it is, see, it's kind of puffy. So mm -hmm. the custard disappeared. So now, you have to make a water bath, because you can't cook it directly on your oven rack. <clears throat> so you have to boil some water. This has been boiling, so it's pretty hot already. You have to pour it into any pan that is larger than the one you're going to use. And then we put this one in the middle. Okay. So and then we have to tint it. So it doesn't burn. You have to tent it with foil, but you can't let the foil actually touch the croissants. So you have to make it a little bit loose. Like a tent. Like a tent. Tent soon. I actually like to use this kind of pan that has, it's like a turkey roasting pan because it has handles. Because that way it makes a real tent. And then you have to poke. This is gross because that fork has eggs on it. You have to poke some holes so the steam can come out. <clears throat> okay. Make sure it is loose. Okay, the oven is preheated at 350 degrees. And this bakes for about 45 minutes. So I'm going to put it, I lowered my oven rack so that it will be right in the middle. Heavy. Okay, so in 45 minutes, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, after the bread pudding was in for 45 <coughs> minutes, bless you, I took off the tent and put it back in for another 40 minutes. It's really heavy. Oh, wow. Now, you can tell that it's done because the croissants have puffed up and the custard has set, which means if you jiggle this, I have to get this out. This is going to be tricky. So I need this pan again. Let's figure out how to get this out. If you jiggle it, the custard won't move loosely. So that's what it looks like when it's all done. All right. and now I'm going to actually um, make another one for tomorrow. So I'm going to let this one sit and cool. Oh, we're going to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a small one for Vanya and Yvette and my son.
Yay! Yum! So here it is, bread pudding. See, that's the one we're working on. I'll right. make banya, type it up, and you can try to make it at your house.